GIMP is without a doubt the most powerful GUI image editor on Linux. If we're including things that don't have a GUI, I guess Image Magic maybe is more powerful, but hardly anyone's using that. Now, with that extra power, comes with it a level of complexity which for some tasks might be a little bit overkill. Sometimes you just want to do something really simple, and for that, maybe you want to use an application like Annotator. So why would you want to use Annotator? Well, let's say you want to quickly annotate some screenshots and point out some interesting element. So pressing Control, I was going to bring up the file prompt, and let's say we go and open up this one right here. And the first thing I want to mention is it does something that even GIMP can't do. It allows you to add shapes. I have no idea how GIMP is still missing this feature, but clicking on this icon right here, we can go and select either the outline of a shape or a colored in shape. So I can go and add this outline square here, put it around my head, and then maybe I want to go and, I don't know, censor out my logo with a circle for whatever reason. Drag that over there, and now that is being covered. And you may have noticed that the final line actually had two separate shapes. It has a line. So let's go and point to, I don't know, the Twitter icon and then go and add in an arrow and then put this on the end of the line. Obviously, you don't have to merge them, but hey, it gives you the ability to have a line and an arrow or just use them separately, which is certainly nice to have and makes it so you don't have extra things cluttering your UI when they don't really need to be there. Now, when it comes to scrolling, this application does have scroll bars on the right-hand side and also down the bottom, but if you want to scroll with your mouse, scrolling up and down can be done like you might expect it to be, but if you go and hold the shift key, then you can scroll left and right. But rather than just making shapes, maybe you want to go and free draw some stuff as well. So that can be done by using the pencil tool. Now, ignore where the icon is being placed on the left-hand side. That's just for whatever reason in the wrong spot. It works perfectly fine when we actually go and draw something. So this works basically as you'd expect it to. Nothing really out of the ordinary. And this application is going to work with a pen. It's just that it doesn't actually have pen pressure input. So you're not really going to get much benefit out of the pen. But obviously you still have more control while using it. One thing you may have noticed is every time you use one of the tools, it actually goes and deselects it. So let's go and select the pencil tool again. And let's try to draw something, lift the pencil, and then draw something again. That isn't actually going to work. So I'm not a big fan of this interaction method. It does make it really difficult to draw anything where, you know, there is two steps to it. But this isn't really a drawing application. It's just for doing annotation. And in that case, I guess it's fine. It's just... In some edge cases, it can be kind of annoying. So far, everything we've been doing has been the same color and also the same width. So unlike a lot of applications out there that have individual controls for each individual utility, individual tool, whatever you want to call it, this actually controls everything globally. So selecting the color right here, this, while it is called shape color, is actually the color for the pencil and also the shapes. So let's go and set this one to blue and then select the pencil. And as we'll see, now we're drawing a blue line. And the same is true for the width as well. So let's go and set this to the thinnest line. And under this option, we can also go and make the line dashed as well. So let's go and select this one, select the pencil tool. And there we go. Now we have a dashed line. Now you actually can go and modify any of the existing lines or existing shapes you already have in the image. Let's go and select this one right here. Go and make this be a thinner line, and also we can make it dashed as well. So let's go make it this dash right here, and there we go. Now, with any of the filled in shapes, obviously you can't change the width, but you can go and change their color. So let's make this one this gray right here. Adding in text is also basically just as easy, but configuring the text is a little bit finicky. So clicking on the text icon here, let's go and add in, I don't know, hello world. So configuring the color is done the exact same way you'd expect. We go and select the text, go and select the color, and then, wow, it has a different color. Crazy. Now, half the other settings are split up in two different locations. Changing the font isn't on this section right here, the font is controlled up here. The problem though is nothing else actually uses this font setting. So 
it kind of makes more sense to integrate it in this bar. Everything else, though, like bold, underline, italics, all of that fun stuff is controlled in here instead. And all of that does actually have hotkeys, the hotkeys you'd basically expect. You may be thinking this icon right here is for zooming. That's not actually the case. What it does is adds in a magnifier. So we can zoom in on certain parts of the image and this will be saved in the output. So let's go on, I don't know, zoom in on this mouth here and actually increase the zoom. And they, there you go. Just have that beautiful sight on your screen. And there's also a blur. Now keep in mind that blur should never be used for anything actually sensitive because the information can be decoded. If it's just to block out something that isn't really that important though, it is gonna be perfectly fine. The last two icons are pretty straightforward. We have a crop. It does what you'd expect a crop to do. We can go and crop it. We can go and move this around. And also we have a resize. Now you might notice the image is considerably cleaner than it was before. So when I tried to crop, it crashed the application before. I've never seen that happen. I don't know what happened there, but I don't think it's a consistent thing. So far, I haven't been mentioning hotkeys with any of the tools. The reason for that is because none of the tools, at least from what I can see, actually have hotkeys so you are going to have to select them with your mouse which does make it a little bit more annoying especially considering they deselect every time you use them and also some of the hotkeys don't play nicely anyway so if we go and add in a shape let's say this one right here if we go and right click on it click on copy and then control v to paste paste it perfectly fine if we go and make a new shape we go and control C on this, which as we can see is the binding it has, and then control V, it doesn't actually copy it. You can also do control zero to zoom to the actual size of the image and control one to zoom to the size of the window. Now there's also no mouse zooming. However, we do have control minus to zoom out and control equals to zoom in. I actually prefer it being on control equals as opposed to control plus, because to do control plus, you also have to add a shift into that binding as well, making it a three button combo. One thing you may have noticed earlier is things like the magnifier and also the blur actually hid the shapes. This from my understanding is intentional because these things only affect the image in the background. If you want the shapes to still be visible though, what you can do is go and click on the magnifier or the blur, send it to the back, and then it still won't affect them, but you can still see the shape. I think if you're using one of the really basic screenshot applications like MAME or Scrot, this is actually a really useful tool to have on the side. Because sure, you could go and open up GIMP, but a lot of the stuff this application does is kind of tedious or difficult to actually do in that application. But if you're not using those and you're instead using something like Flameshot like I am, it's a much harder sell on this application because while Flameshot doesn't do all of the same stuff that Annotator actually does, it does most of it and all of it is integrated directly into the screenshot itself, making it really, really easy to add things, modify like what you actually want to screenshot, all of that fun stuff, all in this one spot. I don't know which solution is better, but I do think they both have their place. And depending on how much importance you place on an application having multiple roles, maybe something like this actually will fit your workflow. So if you want to try this out, it is available on Ubuntu as a PPA, on Arch Linux from the AUR, and also from Flathub. So try it out and let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to go and support this channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribestone, and Bearer Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.